All right, Shalom, Shalom, Kohlo Yimla, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachakutash, the bonus to my elders and apostles, a great millstone, which are the men that were well that taught us his truth. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. All right, and, um, you know, real quick, wanted to come out with uh, these two different uh, passages in the book of Isaiah. Uh, I got two in verse 60, uh, excuse me, I got two verses in, in chapter 62. And also, I'm going to bring out Isaiah 19, you know, just to keep that. Um, that energy going, man, you know, we got to keep crying, you know, it's a part of prophecy that we would cry unto the Lord, you know, I just finished listening to the elder Yashuamba's lesson about, um, you know, prophecy and, you know, Esau is a madman. He's, he's becoming even more of a madman right now. And, and right now we're, we have a, a level of freedom. All right. Uh, but soon this is this, this season of, uh, you know, bros, us, you know, going to work, you know, uh, going home, chilling, hanging out with each other and things like that and uh, going to camp on Saturday or Sunday, whatever day, you, you know, you go out um, soon that that's going to come to an end, man. Uh, at some point, man, the Heavenly Father has to really well, he doesn't he doesn't have to. It, it's prophecy, you know, um, the Heavenly Father is going to make do with the, with the promises that he said, you know, and bringing forth the kingdom of heaven. But before we can get there, you know, the hard stuff has to happen. All right. Uh, you know, Esau is losing his mind right now and, and he has to bring another uh, another lockdown. He has to do all these different things. The scriptures say that he's going to come down with great wrath because he know it that he hath but a short time in the book of Revelation uh, 12 and 12 and different things like that. And what we have to keep calling unto the Lord, man, to bring forth that that energy, man, because it's a part of prophecy that we would continuously what cry unto the Lord. All right. Let me read this Isaiah 62 and 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Which Jerusalem represents a people before it's a place, okay? Uh, so you, this is this is to you, Israel, basically. I've set watchmen upon thy walls, O Israel. You know, you Israelites, right? O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night, which is what you see happening with the men of the Lord, man. Right now, I'm making a lesson. It's daytime. It's six forty a.m. You know, I'm about to step into the plantation in about twenty minutes, and what? As soon as I'm done uh, uh, making this lesson and, and done uploading it, all right? There was there was there was. Another brother that started at 650, right? And then one, one, you know, on the other side of the earth, it, it's going to be 2 a.m., right? That someone's making a video there. The peace is never going to be held, man. We And not only are we making lessons 24-7 because there's, there's so many brothers all around the earth, right? But also, we're crying unto the Lord. You know, the uh, the elder Apostle Gabar made the lesson about, you know, throwing curses upon America. Hey, man, I, I, I know for me, I wake up vexed every single day. The fact that I got to wake up, I got to be up before the sun is and, and, and work for this for this damn devil, right? Work for, for, for peanuts, right? Hey, I throw curses up on the on the way to work, man. You know, I, I pray for bros. I pray for the elect. I, I pray for, for those that believe. And I send up curses on America. And as you should too, man, make that a, make that a habit, a good habit, because that's a good habit to have, you know? Uh, pray for the brothers, pray for the elder apostles, pray for everybody, but what curse America. Okay. You know, keep it balanced. It says ye that make mention of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, keep not silence, right? Cause we're not silent. We're going to keep praying. All right. This is more than just, just preaching and teaching. This is also praying to the most high, you know, putting curses upon America. All right. Uh, uh um, asking for deliverance, begging for deliverance. You know, th this is no different from, um, you know, from Egypt, you know, uh, that's what the elder, the elder Yashawamba was talking about that, uh, the lesson in the lesson he made as well. He was talking about, you know, uh, the Exodus, right? We were heard, you know, when you read the book of Exodus, which I highly recommend if you haven't read the whole, uh, uh, story of our Exodus, you know, read it because it's the exact same thing that's happening now. It's just more spiritual than, than in a physical sense right now. All right. Uh, well, not, I wouldn't even say that. It's, it's almost the exact same. The only difference is not all Israel is leaving in the end. And we're not leaving uh, by walking out. We're going to be lifted up into chariots, right? When you get deeper into the knowledge, right? Well, when you read the book of Exodus, which I, I've read it uh, a bunch of times. I might read it again just because my one of my favorites. Hey, man, that's, that's, a re, that's a rerun of this. This is a rerun of that, I mean, you know? Well, we were heard. We The, 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 the scriptures say that the Lord heard our affliction, Okay. And then what? He sent the messenger. He sent that. That he sent Moses to tell us to tell us uh, about ourselves. To tell us who who the Most High is. All right. It was no different from today. Yeah, we knew our. We might have known our tribe and things like that. But a lot of us was into idolatry when we were in ancient Egypt. So it's no different from now. Okay. 
um, you know, we coming back into the, our remembrance, right? It's literally the same thing. So it says what? It says, ye that make mention of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Shai, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So it's a part of prophecy that we would literally bother the Lord. We would literally give the Lord no rest, all right, till he establish a uh, 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 Jerusalem, a praise in the earth, aka the kingdom of heaven, till he brings forth the kingdom of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. You see? That's a part of prophecy that that, that that would happen. And that's what we're doing, man. We're continuously crying unto the Most High. You know, never get rid of that spirit, man. You always, of course, you want to, with balance, you want to be, you know, in a, a, a mindset of, man, I hate this place, you know, and, and, and but not being negative, just knowing that this is not our rest. All right? Don't vex yourself to the point where you don't even want to live no more, nothing like that. But, you know, just remember, this this ain't living. You know, it might seem cool, you know, because yeah, it is. It's all right. You know, we, you know, yeah, we got to go to work and slave off for Esau, you know, but we have some comforts. But don't let that comfort be your downfall. You know, you got to still have the mindset of, uh, yo, there's better, there's something better than this, man. There's, there, there's more out there than just this. Okay. Isaiah 19 and 19, in that day. Shall there be an altar to the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt, which through the spirit, we know that that Egypt is talking about America. This is uh, clearly it's not talking about ancient Egypt. That's why it says in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Because, you know, that didn't happen in um, the, the, the ancient Egypt. All right. There was no altar to the Lord there. You know, the Lord plagued, plagued the city and destroyed it. All right. Uh, and we just left. We spoiled them. There was no altar in ancient Egypt. That's how you know this is prophetic. All right. Um, it says, you know, since you got some Israelites out there that don't know how to break this down. All right. Uh, you know, that one uh, Sakari guy. I don't know his name. Um, but uh, you had vocab. I think it was vocab or one of his one of his uh, disciples, you know, was brought out this brought out this in Isaiah. And he tried to, you know, use it and be wicked, you know. But what we know, this is talking about. Uh, um a different Egypt. It's not talking about ancient Egypt. Okay. Just a real quick side note. I want to stay on topic though. I'm going to read it again. Isaiah 19, 19. In that day shall, shall, in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, which that altar is us. All right. Us going out and teaching. All right. I want I, I, you know, I didn't want to bring out too many backing precepts and, and read the whole chapter because it's a very long chapter. But, you know, uh, hey, do you do your do your study on uh, on your own time? OK, do your own study on your own time and learn about this chapter. It's a very prophetic chapter. That's a lot of heavy prophecies in Isaiah 19. It says, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior, a great one, and he shall deliver them. Right. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai. Because when you read up, when you start at verse one, what does it say? The idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. All right. Let me get that real quick, actually, because let's talk about the same savior. This is in ancient Egypt. Isaiah 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Right? And then when you read on, what does it say? Uh, the, the Egyptians against the Egyptians and things like that. Kingdom against kingdom, you know, and the spirit of Egypt shall fail. So you know this is this is this is a, a prophetic chapter, okay, for the most part. All right, when you read it, because in 18 it says in five in uh Isaiah 19, 18, in in that day shall five cities. I should have just brought this one out too. Shall five cities speak? No, so like it. In in and it says, in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. Right. That's prophecy of 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 what the the Israelites. We're we're gonna we're gonna know ourselves again. Essentially, that's what that's talking about. Okay. And what we would we would um you know preach the destruction of America. Okay, because yeah, because we would talk about the destruction of uh, of the city, right? Uh, ancient Egypt wasn't necessarily destroyed off the face of the earth. Ancient Egypt is still there, right? America, 
that's the prophecy for America, Babylon, also known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, or the virgin daughter of Babylon in the scriptures. You see? Also known as Egypt. Okay? The Lord gives it many nicknames. Okay? So to speak, right? Nicknames, right? But nonetheless, we got to keep crying, man. I'm going to read 20 again. It says, And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of, of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, because of the oppressors. And that's what we're doing. Uh, me making this lesson is crying about the oppressors. You throwing curses on America is crying about the oppressors. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep that mindset. That mindset of, you know, please, Lord, bring this down. Destroy Babylon. You know, destroy America. Bubba Kasha. Please. All right, because we want Yahweh Shai to rule, man. We, I, I know, I know me. I want peace of mind, man. You know, I don't want to worry about. I don't want to worry about my credit score and dumb shit like that with Esau. I don't want to worry about uh, uh, usury and interest, dumb shit like that. You know what I mean? Like things that are just a nothing but oppression. Uh, we're living in it. That's the thing, man. We gotta remember we're living in. Um, we're living in a system that was not only designed against us but it was it was it was not designed for us in the first place we're living in a system that's contrary to the ways of righteousness we want the ways of yahweh bashim yahweh to be established and that's what we're pushing for that's what we're crying about and we're going to keep crying man I, we don't care what none of you what none of you naysayers say man we're going to keep crying unto the lord yahweh bashim yahweh all right until he established and make jerusalem a praise in the earth and he's going to for you non-believers, man. And it's gonna it's gonna be beautiful, man. All right. So with that, uh Double honors to my elders and my apostles agree mills so much other men that rule will and that taught us is truth. And we gotta keep crying, man. Keep crying unto the Lord Yahweh man. Forget what these people say. Forget about because there's a lot of I, I was reading some comments, man. There's a lot of naysayers that um, you know, when people speak about even the Israelites, they're in, they're in the comments. This ain't true. This is complete madness. This is complete. Yeah, I. Right. You keep saying, hey, hey. You know what? What do the scriptures say? You know, shall shall their shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Lord forbid. So we we ain't worried about you non-believers, man. Y'all, you non-believers are gonna receive the biggest. I told you so. In history, the biggest one ever to exist, and it, there it's so big it'll never happen again. All right, Shalom. Call Oyabashimel Shai.